In 2003, I had the good fortune to found Leket Israel, the National Food Bank. And Leket got founded for one reason, and that reason is discrepancies. The discrepancy between those who have and those who don't. The discrepancy between outstanding buffets in Israeli hotels, tremendous waste on the one hand, and so much, so much poverty that we were all talking about day in and day out. And I remember when I got started, I had this idea in my head. This is gonna be really easy. Operationally, I don't seem to have much competition, so we're good there. And Israel, Israel's a growing, wealthy country in the top 15% of GDP in the world, high-tech exits, we're all reading about startup nation. I'm gonna raise all the money in Israel. No dinners, no travel, no friends of associations to have to deal with. This is gonna be really great. And when I started to talk to people about this, they scoffed, they mocked me. The only thing they didn't do was tar and feather me. People said to me, are you kidding me? You're gonna raise the money in Israel? From whom? Israelis simply don't give any charity. And I'll be honest, I listened to the naysayers. Instead of figuring out ways to raise the money in Israel, I ran around the world and I've been traveling nonstop for the last 10 years to the US, to Canada, to England, to Switzerland, and parts in between. And luck gets grown. Today we have a budget of almost $9 million. But as the years pass by, I notice something. The first couple of years, people gave me a pass. But then a new question started to crop up. People would say to me, what are Israelis giving to you? And I would say, what are Israelis giving to me? Millions, tens of millions of dollars a year worth of food. No, 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 they would say, that's not what we mean. <laughs> well, tens of thousands of volunteer hours a year? You must mean that. And they would say again, no, no, no. That's not what we mean. What we mean is this, show me the shekels. <laughs> they wanted to know what are Israelis taking from their pocket and giving leket, in our case, or in general, what are Israelis giving in the charitable world? And so this perception really sat with me. Is it possible that Israelis aren't giving? I'll be honest, I can't remember any Israeli ever asking me, do American Jews give charity? It was always the other way around. And so at the time we said to ourselves, we gotta start raising money in Israel. We need it for the charity and we're not gonna get any more donations if we don't start having a reasonable answer to that question. So we started to work on it and I'm happy to say that today we do raise millions and millions of dollars a year in Israel every year and that is growing. But who cares? Okay, why does this actually matter whether we're raising money in Israel or not? And I think the reason is one of perception and one of risk to actually the future of philanthropy to Israel from the diaspora. And what do I mean by that? When American Jews, diaspora Jews look and they see tremendous wealth creation in Israel on the one hand, and then there's this cognitive dissonance between that wealth creation and the fact that they feel, correctly or incorrectly, that Israelis aren't giving, eventually that's gonna lead people to say, wait a second, I'm not a friar, as you would say in the Hebrew, I'm not a sucker. <laughs> if they won't take care of their own when they have so much money, why should we be their partners in giving? And while that may not sound like a problem, especially in a country which is growing in wealth, I think it's more than just the money. My fear and the risk I see in this is that giving to Israel is another chink in the armor. It's another link in the chain that connects world Jewry. When you support Israel, when you give to Israel, when you get invested in the work of Israel, you're creating that connection to the Holy Land in a very intense way. And we've seen that in Leket over the years, time and time again. So I am fearful if this perception remains that eventually, not today, not in 10 years, maybe in 20 years or 50 years, that support will start to dry up. And if it does dry up, I think that could actually lead to major problems in diaspora Jewish communities, which are so concerned today with Jewish education, Jewish continuity, camping, birthright, and all the other wonderful ideas that we as a community are putting forward.
So what can we do to change this perception? Everyone agrees, Jews give. No one gives like the Jewish people. Israelis? Okay. Let's go back in time a little bit. Okay. There was a time that Israel was a poor country struggling to make ends meet under existential threat on a daily basis. That's not the Israel we know today. And that can explain a little bit about how this perception, which was correct in those days, grew. The fact is, in the return to Zion, diaspora Jews pumped money into Israel in tremendous amounts, and it was needed. And that's why we have people like Nathan Strauss, some of you know Netanya, it's named for him, or Edmund de Rothschild, Zichron Yaakov is named for him, or Moses Montefiore, many things are named for him, among them Yamin Moshe. So in those days when Israel was struggling, it made absolute sense that the country was literally built by the diaspora Jewish community. Okay? But today, the situation is different. Recently, there have been a number of reports in Israel which talk about what are the real numbers of Israeli giving. And I'm gonna say some things to you now that I think most of you are gonna be pretty surprised at. First off, Israelis donate 1.2% of their disposable income to charity. In the United States, that number is 1.9%. So you'd say, that doesn't sound that good. What is that, 30%, 40% less? But here's the thing, Israel is number two in the world behind the United States. When you hear that, it all sounds a little bit better. That's number one. Number two, Israeli giving to charity has been growing by about 21% a year for the past three years, while diaspora giving to Israel has been growing by about 10%. Again, are Israelis doing everything they need to? No, but when you start to hear those statistics, the perception starts to change slightly. And here's the most important one. Of all the money needed to fund Israeli organizations, 50% actually comes from the government, 30% comes from paid in fees, and only 20% actually comes from philanthropy. And you'd be surprised to hear that of that 20%, half of it, 8 billion shekels, comes from diaspora Jews, and the other half, 8 billion shekel, comes from Israeli donors. So when I heard these statistics, I was pretty blown away. Leket is not at 50% yet, but this gave me some food for thought. Now, it's great if I'm sharing these statistics with all of you, but we need to get the word out in a much greater way. And I like to call that philanthropic Hasbara. Hasbara means PR, public relations. Now, how are we gonna do this? Besides the people who are gonna watch this video, okay, the way we can get this done is by getting the great Israeli philanthropists, and there really are many of them. I've highlighted a couple, Raya Strauss, Steph Wertheimer, and Avi Naor. We need to get them on the road, talking not just to Israelis where they are doing this type of talking and telling Israelis about what they do, and trying to encourage Israeli philanthropy, but we need to get them talking to diaspora audiences as well in order to spread the word about Israeli philanthropy, not just statistics, but about big time and small time Israeli philanthropy. That's one piece of the philanthropic Hasbara. The second piece of that is I think we need to change the message slightly. See, the message that goes on around the world right now is one of give to Israel. I want that message to change slightly. Just like you have a tourism authority which says, go Israel, let's change this message slightly to give to and with Israel. Israelis are already your partners. You've seen the numbers. They're giving. Israelis are truly giving. They are your partners already. So let's work with them together and make sure that this is known. That's philanthropic Hasbara. I'd like to add one more piece to the puzzle that I think will push us forward in keeping this absolutely vital piece of Jewish continuity in place. And here I'm gonna challenge my colleagues in the NGO world and my friends in the philanthropy world. And I think from the experience of Leket, there are a couple of areas that I'm proud of the work Leket does. And I think if other charities in Israel and philanthropists pushing and amplifying these demands request this type of behavior, that all of this is gonna to come together. And I'll tell you three different things. Number one, we like to call it equality. In Leket, one of the great things we have is that our Israeli, American, British, Canadian, 
French, I think that's all it is, boards work together to drive strategy and to raise money for the organization. We make it known to our donors that we want their input. Thankfully, most of them don't want to give that much input, but we put it out there. <laughs> and just putting it out there makes a difference in our conversation with them. We couldn't obviously have all of our donors working with us, but we appreciate those and we ask for those to come and help us out who are willing. That's number one. Second, we like to call transparency and information. I look at Leket and the other charities in the field as quasi-public companies. That means putting out financial statements. That means putting them online. That means showing your impact, especially to diaspora funders. There are so many local needs today. Getting money from people overseas, is, it, it's a bracha. It's, it's, it's almost beyond belief that you can still get it today when there are so many local needs. And if there's any way that we want that continue, to continue and to keep our continuity, then we have to show impact to the donors who we're giving to. The only thing we shouldn't share when we're talking about transparency information is our donor lists. I think all donors and all charities are very appreciative when we don't share that. And the last piece I like to call giving back and volunteering. And what I mean by that is volunteering is simple. Create volunteer opportunities for your donors when they come to Israel. Once again, not all of your donors are gonna look to volunteer, but put it out there. And I think Leckett's done an admirable job having over 60,000 volunteers last year picking in the fields in order to help us serve the poor. But the flip side, and I think the more important side for the Israeli NGO scene is the giving back. There's a lot of expertise today in Israel, in health, in science, in security. And I'll take Leckett as an example. We are on the board of the Global, and Global Food Banking Network. We send staff members all the time to different food banks around the world, to different Jewish food pantries around the world in order to share the knowledge that we've gained. There's so much knowledge in Israel. Let's create that situation where philanthropy helps create operations and flip that back to the diaspora and help. I'm concerned about the future of Jewish giving to Israel. I think that the, state, the modern state of Israel owes so much to the philanthropy of the diaspora Jewish community. Frankly, the state would not exist in the way it does today without the incredible generosity of world Jewry over the years. But I think that if we follow some of the steps that I've mentioned and others that are out there, I think we can continue this great partnership as a win-win for as many years as we need it. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching Eli Talks. Click through or subscribe to the Eli Talks channel for more inspired Jewish ideas.